Hello, this is Joaquina Sitka from The Inner Gaze, and this is Elliot Rasnick, the founder and mayor of Beloved. <laughs> and I'm really excited to have this opportunity to chat with him today. This is his home, we're here in his home, and we're gonna have a conversation. And I have no idea what's gonna happen here. Just... So I just wanna say thank you, Elliot, for allowing me to be here with you and for allowing us to have a window into your realm and into your mind. Um, is there anything you'd like to say to introduce yourself and what it is that you do? Let's see. Uh, well, I'm grateful to just get a chance to hang out with you and talk to you and uh, sit in front of your camera and see what's going to happen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, uh, you know, uh, well, I know that uh, what I feel like I'm doing right now is um, just asking myself how, uh, asking myself what I can handle uh, all at once. Uh, hmm. and, um, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. So I've been watching you as an event producer for over 10 years now, or like been friends in, in our community. Do you feel like you are really living your like deepest purpose and your joy? Do you really feel like this is like the thing that gives you the most joy and excitement about life is creating events and being an event producer and putting on this festival? Like do, putting on Beloved, like is this like the thing that brings you like, the greatest joy in the world. Thanks. A year ago, uh, I would I would have very easily answered yes, um, and I and right now I'm feeling really passionate and really connected, uh, and I and honestly, the last few months I have been struggling. Mm -hmm. uh, to feel connected uh, with what I'm doing. I, mm. I have spent most of the last decade believing that my work and my purpose and my passion were aligned, um, mm. or, or they have been aligned. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and yeah, in the last few months, I've been, it's been a little lost. I mean, I think one thing that's up for me is I have this looming decade shift uh, so here's this last year of my 30s, or the the beginning of my fifth decade here on the planet, mm. and um, and it has me asking. Uh, it has me just asking that question in a deeper way. What I question? Think, uh, is this what I'm here to do? To like to put on events and to be an event producer and to create festivals and right. and beloved because that's kind of like what you're married to at this point. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So I uh, and or, or I mean and, and I think the bigger question is, is this the most efficient way for me to bring love and light into the world, or for me mm. to offer healing to the world? Mm. And that's that's really the question that I want to ask myself. And I think mm. that's that's the thing that, for the first time in a long time, that I have been questioning for the last few months. And I don't think. Questioning that for the last few months means that the answer that's coming through is no, but there's something valuable about questioning that. I think. Hmm. I, I think I feel more sad and more scared about the world than I have, in a while because it's so much. Uh, I just see, so more, so much more clearly. Uh, I'm, I watched your. Uh, conversation when you were doing the promo for Inaugurata La Primavera, right? Mm. And that was specifically an event that was kind of geared towards uh, addressing the issue of migrant farm workers and Hispanics and Latino community and trying to like weave social activism into mm. your your business and the beloved presents. Is that correct? So is it is what you're talking about kind of the anxiety that we're all feeling because of what's going on politically right now and not feeling certain that putting on festivals and 
is a meaningful contribution to what's like the, the bigger problems that's going on on the planet right now? Uh, thanks. So I, uh, I know that celebration is important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I do. And I believe in the possibility of uh, connecting the power of celebration well to connect. Uh, to connect us to each other, to connect us to the earth, uh, to connect us to something deeper. I believe that that power is important for giving us the strength to make change and to ask where change comes from. Uh, and, and yeah, I, I'm also wanting to be more directly engaged in uh, in healing in a concrete way. I mean, it's my belief that all of these events over the past decade or more have been healing events, and that that that's important. And I also believe that there's just a more concrete healing that we can do. For example, at Inaugurado La Primavera, the healing that happened when uh, well, when we had the least white event that I, I've ever uh, that I've ever produced, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the way it felt to be in a more diverse audience, I think for everyone, mm -hmm. meant something. And the way that mm -hmm. so much of our community, so many folks in our community, got to hear the stories of uh, of people who live in communities comprised of. Uh, a lot of undocumented immigrants who are really scared right now. Mm -hmm. I, um, I'm curious, like, do you feel like you want Beloved then as a festival to kind of go into more of an activist direction in the future? I mean, you asked, do I want Beloved to become um, an activist organization and uh, I mean, I'm not positive I understand what the term activist means. Well, I mean, to kind of like use the concept that you had created for the Inaugurado de la Primavera, where it was this trying to create a fusion of celebratory event with activism. I, I guess I was just wondering if that was kind of where you were seeing the yes. actual Beloved Festival going yeah. towards. Thanks. I mean, I think, so in some ways, this is already what's been happening for the last few years, right? When, uh, when two years ago, we started having a sincere conversation about sexual violence mm -hmm. and about the creation of a consent culture. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, that, that felt like the beginning of saying, uh, we, we're not willing to to talk about, uh, we're not willing to pretend that um, that the darkness isn't here. You know, we're not willing we're not willing to say that love doesn't include things that don't always look beautiful. Mm. I something that I've wanted to ask you for a really long time, and that I you know mentioned the other day was, I have been really curious. Um, what? Okay, so in 2006, Elliot, before doing Beloved, two years before the first Beloved, you did Metapoesis, which was a one-time off event that I think, I imagine it was kind of your attempt to start a festival, uh, you know, an annual festival, but it was a failed attempt somewhat. And, and it was an interesting experience for those of us who were there, and um, I definitely had my own experience being there as a participant. And I'm curious, I've always been really curious what you learned from that event or what happened for you at that event that kind of helped you move in the direction of creating Beloved. Because I'm assuming that that particular event was very educational for you and moved you in the direction of creating Beloved when you, when you first started that. And that, Thanks. you know, I've just been really curious about that. Thanks. Well, yeah, I, you know, I've long said that Beloved grew up out of the compost of Metapoesis. Uh, and I know that's true. 
so uh, I, you know I mentioned that I'm uh, I've been you know somewhat aware of this phenomenon of festival culture and not fully engaged in it for a long time and I think metapoesis was um, came out of this recognition that um, a lot of people who I really loved had a tremendous amount of energy and passion for uh, for festivals and uh, and I wanted to ask if there was a uh, if there was a way to do them differently and you know the, the fundamental idea of metapoesis was that the social features of people moving through the festival and connecting um, at the festival would intersect with the ecological features of uh, of um, regenerating damaged land. Oh, interesting. And, and that was really the fundamental idea of Metapoesis, and of course the festival site then was designed by Toby Hemingway and Mark Lakeman, uh, who suggested um, a series of swales uh, cascading through a beautiful draw um, in the, um, you know, just right in the transition of mm -hmm. the Cascades, uh, where there's not as much water. Mm -hmm. And uh, and to create those, um, we brought in some heavy machinery. Oh, that's um, right. Oh, I remember. Right, you know, sort of. And, and, uh, and some neighbors um, reacted to that in a really negative way. Um, there was this tremendous sort of nascent social media, you know, the um, pre-existence of social media backlash about our use of heavy machinery. Mm -hmm. um, this was during the Tribe.net days. That's right, yeah. Massive boycott for the event. Uh, mm. um, and the whole event, you know, catastrophically um, evaporated and was eventually <laughs> canceled. And. Uh, but it still happened because, like, I went to it and, like, there was music and performers showed up. That's right. We did some. We. we it still happened. It still happened, and you know, so. Uh, but it wasn't a smashing success. It was not a smashing success, and <laughs> and so, yeah. I mean, you know, I, so that was my f first big failure. Mm. Uh, and everyone, I mean, I think men especially, learn a lot. From failure, mm. I uh, one of the things I learned a lot about at that time was, you know, I was I mean I was traumatized by the failure, and I really watched myself disappear. I I wasn't really available for life, <laughs> even during the event. I I'm I wasn't fully there, right. and. Yeah, and huh. and I think that's. Uh, I mean, I mentioned to you, um, in you know, when we first sat down, that you know, I'm asking myself, what can I handle? I'm asking myself, you know, how can I stay present? How much can I can be happening for me while I can stay here and stay present? Um, and and and. And it was in reflecting to the way that I disappeared in the face of the trauma of the failure of metapoesis that I first learned to start asking myself to to get more present even when there's some trauma happening, you know, even when it's getting really scary. So you were saying you were talking about how the land that Beloved is, is on was clear-cut 25 years ago or something? That's right. So, uh, so you know, the land is in the process of regenerating, turning back into a native forest, and we get to be in, uh, and, and we get to share that process. So, um, as uh, we expand in, you know, expand our areas for camping and parking, we do that in a way that helps build the, uh, the soil in the forest and helps make room for some of the native trees to, um, to grow and get big and for the, um, you know, the either, you know, for the non-native species to, to uh, be cleared, which is a process that we're engaging every year, 
or for the um, uh, smaller, tighter uh, uh, stands of alder to uh, to get uh, to get cut and then chipped and more quickly uh, returned to build the uh, to continue to build the soil in the forest. Interesting. Wow, I had no idea that that much thought was going into the development of the land for the long term. That's right. Yeah. So that's 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 an exciting way that beloved is fulfilling that initial vision of metapoesis. Of like ecological awareness of the imprint of the festival and what it's actually creating for the land for the long term. That's right. Or just the dream of a regenerative festival. Regenerative I think festival. in some ways, you know, uh, metapoesis was in uh, was a reaction to the frequently inauthentic claims of a green festival or a sustainable mm -hmm. festival uh, okay. and acknowledging that the resources that are required for a temporary village of whatever number, whether it's 3,000 or, or so people, that, attempt, that to build a temporary vi village in a place where there's not that infrastructure is, is ecologically expensive and that we have to be honest about that. Yeah. We can we can do it in, or we have responsibility to to build the village um, in as uh, kind a way as we can. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, and I feel like Beloved has demonstrated a willingness or a desire to do that more than any other festival I've ever seen. Especially like, I mean, <laughs> kind of funny, but those like lotus. Porta they weren't porta potties. They were those like lotus shitters last year. Was it last year? Or was it the year before? But it was like right, that, composting well, toilets, and there was this. It was a lot more right. dial, dialed in and kind of a process that you kind of had to that's right. do, and you were supposed to like pee on the ground and that's right. Yeah. So two years ago was our first experiment with uh, with composting toilets, and that was a uh, shitty situation. <laughs> but. <laughs> Yeah, well, and and uh, and then last year, of course, was our next experiment, which was much more successful, okay. and uh, and we'll be um, continuing to grow uh, the composting toilet uh, platform at Beloved. So there will be about twice as many composting toilets at Beloved this year. All of the toilets in the central venue will be composting toilets this year. Oh, okay. Uh, and then uh, and. Hopefully, 2018 will be the year that we manage to completely replace chemical toilets with composting toilets. Cool. Uh -huh. Nice. Okay, well, that's only like next year. You've got big plans. We'll oh. Stepping back to those, like, that novel of a question that I asked you a few minutes ago. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about, how, how, how challenging has it been for you, or what do you feel like you've learned in terms of creating a sustainable festival because mm, I and that's like one thing that as an observer as a participant I don't really see a whole lot of actual public conversation about but I see a lot of failures you always hear talk of you know the pr promoters or the producers of an event like losing however much money and like having to be bailed out and I've seen that sort of situation like play out time and time and time again Thanks. and you know you guys have seemed to do a really pretty good job getting to hopefully not making that actually be a problem like it seems like you guys are. Thanks. So, um, so yeah you know it's been amazing that for most of the last um, uh, nine years um, the festival has been a um, source of right livelihood. I mean, certainly it's not, uh, um, you know, generating massive surplus, but um, it's pretty cool that it's been paying for my life and, and helping to pay for other people's lives. Uh, but it's funny that you mention this now because um, uh, it's pretty clear that Beloved won't come close to meeting its targets this year. Hmm. Uh, I mean, we have two weeks left and, and, and we'll see. I'm, I'm accustomed to sort of reading the patterns and for most of the last nine years, at this point, we were about to announce that we're sold out. Uh, okay. 
and and uh, we're very far away from that this year. Hmm. And in in a you know small event like Beloved, it's always it's very close. And so a um, a gap of you know ten percent uh, fewer tickets than were anticipated is uh, a really big deal. Hmm. Um, and so uh, I am facing a um, a really scary. Uh, Lost this year. Hmm. And, I, and I don't know, uh, I'm not sure yet what's going to happen. But it always seems like it comes together, right? Like, have, <laughs> I mean, maybe it, like it always seems like it, everything just kind of congeals at the last second, but you don't think that that's. He doesn't like we'll see. You know, I mean, just to be completely transparent, you know, everything looked fine in the middle of June, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I, I watch ticket sales very closely, and and mm -hmm. in the middle of June we were, um, you know, uh, enough ahead of last year, and it all was all looking good, huh. and then, uh, and then, in the middle of June, uh, 2016 sales you know, shot up and 2017 just kind of um, stayed where it was. Hmm. So... I wonder why that is. I wonder if it has anything to do with the Eclipse Festival, honestly. Just because it's so big and it's, I don't know. Well, I'm sure that the magnetism of Eclipse is, is detracting from Beloved. And, yeah. and I mean, I'm not... Uh, I'm not blaming it. Yeah, no, 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 no. Just throwing. Uh, just. But yeah, th there is a way that uh, beloved is well eclipsed. <laughs> 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 but uh, uh, yeah. I mean, say aside from like this year, how did you learn to get festival budgeting in the direction of like making sure that you're actually meeting your budget minimums or whatever and like mm. becoming sustainable rather than losing ridiculous amounts of money every year. Thanks. You know, it's this is really funny, but I actually for a long time have used spreadsheets as a visionary tool. Mm. I uh, and uh, it's a really funny process, but um, in fact uh, the first moment that um, when I first had, you know, saw Beloved, uh, the first thing I did was I um, uh, ran inside, uh, opened my laptop, and built the budget. And that was just how I saw, how I was able to get all of the information in about what it was and how it was going to happen. Interesting. Uh, so it was like there was a, so I, I don't know, so. So I think that's part of what makes it work is that I'm actually visioning. It. There's a connection between how I'm seeing something and how I'm seeing making it happen financially. So that, in some ways, like creating a budget and doing all the financial planning is kind of like your your painting and your your easel <laughs> and your sort of situation. That's maybe something like that. Yeah, like that's that, or like that's the way you're sketching it or something. I don't know. So the one question that I have not actually talked about in terms of Beloved yet is the music. Um, I wanted to ask you why you always create these lineups that are the most diverse lineups and that are not the cookie cutter West Coast Festival, electronic music festival lineups because every single year you get all of these global ethnic musicians that pretty much nobody's ever heard of. And I'm like, where do you find these people? And what, what are you doing? Like digging around and where? And like, what, what inspires you? Not to mention also just like ethnic and like color diversity. It's mm -hmm. like you are, your lineup is like, has just more ethnic and yeah. Thank you. Cultural diversity than like any other lineup of any other festival. Thanks. Actually, I think this year, 
it's like something like last year was 17 different countries okay. were represented on the lineup. Okay. Uh, and I think this year it's like over 20, which I'm what? pretty excited about. Uh, so, you, you know, the, uh, the original idea of Beloved is to be a sacred music festival. Mm -hmm. and, and it was funny how I think that, I think that the subtitle actually came before the title. The original name for the event was actually the Amir Khusrau couplet, if there's a heaven anywhere on the face of the earth, it is this, it is this, it is this. Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. I was eventually convinced that that was too cumbersome <laughs> of a name. But it was going to be called, I mean, actually, it was going to be called uh, If there's a heaven anywhere on the face of the earth, it is this, it is this, it is this. Oregon Open Air Sacred Art Music Festival. <laughs> <laughs> nice! So, so the, so the subtitle somehow came through uh, uh, <laughs> first. Uh-huh. And, uh... You could have just called it, it is this, it is this, it is this, and then people would be like, that's an interesting festival name. <laughs> but so the, the notion of a sacred music festival, um, you know, the idea is, so the, I, I mean, the, the fundamental original idea of Beloved is we're not separate. And, uh, and we got tricked and confused, and we need help remembering that we're fundamentally connected to each other, fundamentally connected to the earth, fundamentally connected to spirit. And mm. that Beloved is like an experiment. What would, we, what would happen if we spent a weekend just living as if we're not separate? Mm. And, mm. and, uh, and then the idea is that sacred music is music that speaks to that underlying unity, and mm. and so the and so the kind of the move of beloved is that uh, that any music that speaks to that connection that speaks to unity is sacred music, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. and so and that the ultimate expression of unity is to present as many different voices um, expressing unity as possible. Mm -hmm. so, the, so the diversity of the voices is a key piece of the story. Mm -hmm. And then making mm -hmm. uh, a, and then telling the story in a cohesive arc that can make sense is, you know, is part of the, is part of this expression, this argument that, uh, that we're not separate and that there are lots of very, very different ways to express that we're not separate. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, and it's so interesting you should say that just because one of the things that I've, I've loved is the inclusion of black gospel choir singing mm. at Beloved and just, you know, and all of the African music. Some of the, the best experiences there at Beloved are people who have never heard of before that take the stage like um, that Ukrainian group was? Daka Braka. Yeah, Daka Braka who performed last year. I mean that was like one of the peak experiences of, of Beloved last year and I don't think anybody had ever heard of them and everybody's all, and you know, I think after that we're all like, Daka Braka! Daka Braka! You know, freaking out and that's like one of the cool things and like I mean, where else are you going to find that kind of stuff? I, I love that. Thank you. Okay. I had a lot of fun. Okay, good. Thank Yay. You. Thank you, Elliot. Wow. Thank you for all of the work and the time and energy and commitment that you put into this festival for everybody. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Yes. And thank you for listening. Thank you for joining. Thank you for following my YouTube channel and um, subscribe subscribe and uh, stay tuned I will be sharing more videos and interviews with y'all very soon thank you so much for listening have a wonderful and blessed day Woo!